And uh, right now, I want to bring in Dave Olson, who's a resident in this area, who knows this road very well. Hey, Dave, uh, as you know, when I was coming down here, it's very steep. Uh, there is a sharp turn. So can you kind of describe to us what's beyond the yellow tape that the uh, Sheriff's Department has closed off? Yeah, as, you, as you're driving north on, on Hawthorne toward PV Drive, uh, PV Drive North, the road turns right. It's a little bit of a sharp turn. It's kind of the last sharp turn as you're, as you're coming down. Uh, it's easy to gain speed. There's an emergency turnoff lane just on the right-hand side that's indicative of, of the kind of hazards that you can face as you're coming down this road. If you're not paying attention, if you're going fast, you can, can miss that turn to the right. You either in that turnoff lane with the soft dirt, that'll stop you, or uh, you, you hit the median and you can cross over and, and go to the other side. Now, since you live here, and I don't know uh, when you came out here to check out uh, this area, but were you able to see the crash site yourself, or are you familiar with the crash site from uh, the TV coverage or and, and what you've seen so far? Yeah, I'm familiar with the crash site from, from what I've seen before. I was able to get down a little bit further before they taped this off, just around where the yellow sign is. Uh, and so uh, I, I couldn't see much because it was blocked off with emergency vehicles, but, but it's right around the area that I described uh, just before PV Drive North, just before the emergency turnoff lane. Exactly what's around the bend? Is there like another lane? Is there another road? Well, there, there's, there's two lanes on each side with this median, and, the, and that continues all the way down until you get to what's kind of the major intersection in this area, which is Hawthorne and PV Drive North. Uh, so it's my understanding that this happened about maybe 100 yards or so south of PV Drive North. So is there a drop off there? Yeah, there's drop offs on both sides. There's uh, some horse barns on the right and then a ravine like area similar to what you're going to what we're seeing here on the left hand side of this road. Uh, but there are drop offs on, on, on either side of Hawthorne Boulevard, uh, northbound and southbound. Aside from being uh, someone who lives in the area, I'm guessing you're a huge uh, Tiger Woods fan as well. Huge Tiger Woods fan. Last year at Riviera when he played, uh, I took the day off on a Friday to be able to watch him. Whenever he plays Torrey Pines, my family and I uh, get a place down in San Diego and La Jolla and, and gather from all over the country and follow Tiger. Tiger's the reason why uh, my daughter plays golf and, you know, huge fan. Uh, and he was here in town this weekend for the uh, for the Genesis uh, Invitational. Uh, were you following that event? And then, of course, you know, the Masters is about uh, si uh, seven weeks away. Yeah, I didn't go spectate at, at Riviera this year because Tiger wasn't playing. He hosted and, and, and was in town for that. Apparently, we're staying at uh, Terranea, which is if you follow Hawthorne south toward the ocean, it's, it's a, a hop, skip and a jump away, probably a, a six minute, seven minute drive from here. And as a fan of his, uh, you must know he recently underwent his uh, fifth back surgery. So to hear that he's in this uh, rollover crash uh, as he's recovering from back surgery and he's been plagued with back problems for years, uh, what goes through your mind? You know, this is apparently uh, another microdiscectomy that he had. I, I had uh, spine surgery too, surgical spine, so I, I know the, uh, the the risks that you face when you're recovering. I can't imagine uh, a rollover crash like he experienced after, you know, first in, in, in any condition, but certainly uh, weeks off of surgery as he was. It's, it's, uh, it's tragic and, and certainly concerning. And uh, right now, uh, CBS News uh, is reporting through uh, its contact with his agent that he is currently undergoing surgery. He apparently suffered multiple injuries to his legs. Um, you know, as a as a golfer, as a golf fan, uh, you know, what's your assessment of, of you know injuries uh, to his uh, lower extremities uh, such as that? Well, I, I can't imagine that the Tigers going to be able to make it back from this one. But who knows? That he's the greatest of all time, and nobody thought he'd come back from his uh, from his fusion surgery on his lower spine. But it's it's unimaginable that a professional golfer can have this kind of injury after everything else he's gone in and to be able to come back from it. But you know we we can we can only hope. What is it about this guy that has captured uh, global attention uh, the way he has? I mean, you said yourself, you know, your daughter, the catalyst for her uh, loving the sports was Tiger Woods. Uh, you know, he just he 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 has the it factor. He has the drive, the competition. He thrives under the spotlight with pressure, and I think that's something that that all of us uh, hope that we have those types of traits to be able to to fight through adversity to be able to to, to focus on becoming the greatest that one can be and tiger certainly uh, set an example uh, for that for for others of us to follow
You know, you talk about the drive, and I think we also have to talk about the work ethic as well, because if you look at today's modern golfer, a lot of them are very fit. They're not the guys of a, a generation before. A lot of them are very muscular. Uh, a lot of them weight train. Uh, would you care to say that maybe Tiger might be uh, the catalyst for that, that level of commitment in not just uh, precision, but power in the game of golf? Well, I, I think so. I mean, it, it's funny because Tiger can outdrive anybody. He was the fittest on the course. Uh, he, he started weight training uh, before any of the others did, and I think these kids coming up uh, watched Tiger, emulated Tiger, and, and they all can, can hit the ball further than anybody else did because of, I think, uh, the fitness regimen and the, and, the, and the incredible work ethic that Tiger demonstrated to the world and, and changed the game of golf, certainly, with his, with his work ethic and athletic training. You talked about the sort of phenom that he was even as a child. Uh, I don't know if you grew up here or, or you've lived here for a long time, but I certainly grew up in Southern California. I remember my colleague uh, Jim Hill profiling Tiger when he was about this tall, about six feet, I mean, uh, six years old. And even then, he would drive the ball. He would just crush the ball. Um, the affinity for most of us as Southern Californians have for him is because, you know, I'm his contemporary. I basically saw this guy grow up, go to Stanford. I mean, the, the the hometown hero aspect of it is that a part of the affinity that you have for him? Yeah, it's it's a it's a huge part of it. I mean, in North Orange County kid. I mean, we you know I I, I grew up watching. Well, I, I was I was an adult before while he was still growing up, but certainly watched him and and uh, certainly uh, he he was the the local kid, the local phenom, and I think that affinity and connection with Tiger that that many of us in Southern California feel is because. Uh, where we consider ourselves coming from the same region, the same the same neighborhood, if you will, and I and I can remember uh, working in downtown LA and living in Irvine at the time, driving down, and I would see his mom uh, sometimes on the on the five freeway in traffic with a driving a Mercedes that he won in a tournament with the Tigers' mom uh, custom license plate, and it was it was cool. I mean, he was he was the, the local. Uh, aside from the family aspect, I think uh, for a lot of Southern Californians, he kind of embodies who we are uh, in terms of his mixed race background. You know, I remember uh, there was a skit on uh, Chappelle's show where they kind of, you're laughing, you know, it's the draft, right? Yes. And, and, you know, we talk about his mixed race background, and I think does that kind of help with the global brand, but also the affinity that we have, you know, to, to someone who from, comes from a multi-culture? You know, my daughter is mixed race, and uh, I, I think that, that certainly seeing someone like Tiger at her young age coming up uh, was was an incredible um, opportunity for her to, to recognize that you know that that mixed race culture that all cultures uh, can be inclusive in the game of golf and and um, it, it's a, it's another phenomenal aspect of what Tiger demonstrated uh, to all of us.